Ash catches two new Pokemon as our heroes take part in a Pokemon battling competition. Charizard vs Entei happens as I Dragon Guide return with part 3 of the Johto saga of what if Ash fully evolved all his Pokemon. Let's start with the video. Find themselves in the enchanting Ilex forest guided by Brock with a map in his hand. This is when they spot a young trainer having a tough time with his farfetch. The budding Pokemon trainer introduces himself as Sylvester and adds that he dreams of crafting the renowned purifying charcoal from the Ilex forest by cutting wood into blocks with the help of his Pokemon. Seeing his struggle, Ash decides to lend a helping hand as Bayleaf inspires Sylvester's farfetch to keep trying by demonstrating how to carve out perfect wooden blocks. As Ash finishes up helping Sylvester, Sylvester, Brock decides that the group should take a break with Ash seizing this opportunity to train his Pokemon for the upcoming gym challenge through one-on-one -on -one battles among his Heracross, Cyndaquil, Bayleaf and Terriersa. The training sessions help Cyndaquil learn quick attack and aerial ace while Bayleaf gets more accustomed to battling with its new larger and stronger body. This is when the inspiring sight of Ash's training captures the attention of Sylvester and his far-fetched and they get super inspired by him. However, Team Rocket makes an unexpected entrance capturing our heroes and stealing their Pokemon, leaving Sylvester and Farfetch alone to confront the villains. In these adverse circumstances, Ash encourages Sylvester to believe in himself, drawing parallels to his own early days of struggling as a Pokemon trainer with Pikachu. Whereas with his newfound confidence through Ash's belief in him, Sylvester and Farfetch manage to disrupt Team Rocket's plans, showcasing their determination and growth. Sylvester then thanks Ash for teaching him to be confident and he promises to become a great trainer like Ash as he and Farfetch then successfully cut a wooden block for the purifying charcoal that they need to make. Ash then wishes Sylvester the best as Sylvester tells our heroes that the next gym is in Golden Rod City and our heroes say their goodbyes and leave for the specific location. The journey then continues as Ash, Misty and Brock embark on a fishing adventure on their way to Golden Rod City as Misty reveals that she has grown up around water Pokemon when she was young and thus she wants to train as many strong water type Pokemons as she can. A wild Totodile then appears leading to a duel between Ash and Misty to catch it but Team Rocket interfere only to be quickly dealt by the Totodile itself. Then a 3 on 3 battle ensues to determine the rightful owner of the Totodile. Ash kicks off the battle by sending in Bayleaf while Misty counters with her trusty Poliwag. The arena lights up as Bayleaf's energy wall and Wine Whip seamlessly combine with a coordinated double team, overwhelming Poliwag and securing a decisive victory for Ash. Misty though without many options introduces Psyduck into the battle but this is when the tides really turn as Misty skillfully helps Psyduck in executing a dazzling combination of Confusion and Psybeam, successfully confusing and defeating Bayleaf, shocking Ash completely. Psyduck though does not stop there as it goes on to dominate Ash's Cyndaquil as well, using Disable to clearly neutralize any attempts at unleashing flamethrowers, leaving Misty in a super advantageous position in this battle. But the battle is not yet over as in a surprising twist, Ash's Tediosa steps up capitalizing on Psyduck's exhaustion from the previous battles and with the swift Shadow Claw and Metal Claw combo, Tediosa emerges victorious over Psyduck turning the tables in Ash's favor again. Misty though determined to press on sends out Mantine to face Teriyasa. However, Teriyasa skillfully utilizes Dig to dodge most of Mantine's attacks, countering them with a relentless barrage of Shadow Claws and Metal Claws. The onslaught leaves Mantine unable to battle and Brock declares Ash the triumphant winner, handing him Totodile's Pokeball. The team then moves ahead on their journey towards Goldenrod City and although Misty appears to be a bit upset due to the loss, but there's still a lot of joy in her mind for Ash's victory and the surprising yet eventful growth she just witnessed Psyduck going through. Next on their way to Goldenrod City, our heroes stroll along Pampona's picturesque waterfront, soaking in the stunning sea view where they encounter Benny, a young spirited trainer on his way to the Pokemon Swap Meet event in search of a perfect trade. Intrigued, Ash, Misty and Brock decide to join the lively event, discovering that it hosts a thrilling water type Pokemon competition with a coveted prize of a water stone. Our heroes then decide to participate whereas Ash and Totodile forge an unbreakable bond effortlessly navigating their way to the final of the competition. Meanwhile, Misty, armed with a trusted Poliwag and Brock partnering with Horsey, conquer opponents as well, setting the stage for an unexpected semi-final clash between the two. Though, 
an interesting turn of events, Misty's expertise in water type Pokemon shines through, outclassing Brock and his horsey securing a spot in the final for Misty. Brock though is very happy for Misty but is visibly tense and wrestles with a decision in his mind after his loss to Misty. Meanwhile, the final showdown is eminent as Ash and Totodile eagerly wait for Misty and a Poliwag. The battle kicks off with an intense exchange of water guns and each Pokemon manages to hold its ground. Ash strategically calls for a mud slap but Poliwag's mud shot prevails, dealing a blow to Totodile. Misty, determined to clinch victory, commands a pound attack, prompting Ash to instruct Totodile to catch it with a bite, causing a lot of damage to Poliwag's arm. Ash though steps up the intensity by instructing Totodile to enhance its speed and attack stats from a dragon dance and then double down on Poliwag with continuous bites pushing Misty and Poliwag to the edge of defeat. Then, in a moment of desperation, Misty unleashes her emotions, apologizing to Poliwag for her shortcomings as a trainer. The heartfelt outburst from its trainer triggers a remarkable transformation as Poliwag evolves into a formidable Poliwhirl who with its newfound strength intercepts Totodile's incoming bite mid-air and then launches a powerful bubble beam right into Totodile's face that propels Totodile into a defeat as Misty emerges triumphant, securing both the tournament victory and the Waterstone for Misty. Overwhelmed with pride for Misty, Ash congratulates and hugs her for her exceptional performance and victory. However, the day holds another surprise as Brock approaches Misty with a decision that shocks everyone. Brock, moved by Misty's skill and dedication towards water type Pokemon, decides to entrust his horsey to her care using the Pokemon swap machine at the event. The gesture reflects Brock's belief that horsey deserves a trainer of Misty's caliber to unlock its full potential. Grateful and touched, Misty also hugs Brock and the Pokemon swap machine seals the transfer of horsey to Misty. Now, as the day unfolds like the cannon, Team Rocket unknowingly swap Legitang for Benny's Wobbuffet, leading to their hilarious but iconic mistake. However, their adventure in Pampona come to an end as the heroes continue their journey to Golden Rock City with newfound respect and care for each other. Next, on their journey towards Golden Rock City, Brock consults his map again, revealing that there is a nearby Onyx tunnel with many formidable and strong Onyxes that they need to pass. Unfazed by the challenge, Ash says that with Misty by their side, the renowned water type master, they have nothing to worry about. However, as the sun begins to set, the group decides to wait until the morning before venturing into the tunnel. Next morning, with the break of a new day, Team Rocket approaches the tunnel's entrance, eager to take the same path as our heroes. But little do they know, an unexpected confrontation awaits them within the tunnel as they are ambushed by a dry of onyxes. The ensuing clash results in Team Rocket's hasty retreat, defeated by the former rock type Pokemons. However, undeterred, they hatch a new plan to steal Misty's water type Pokemon to help them cross the treacherous tunnel. Meanwhile, Ash and friends commence their day at the camp. The Pokemon enjoy the morning while Misty dedicates her time to train with her Magicka. This is when Ash spots a wandering Snubble, prompting the group to swiftly give chase to the Pokemon, though they soon lose sight of it. But soon enough, Team Rocket stumbles upon the same elusive Snubble. Jesse though quickly seizes the opportunity and scoops up the Pokemon by capturing it and declares that it would make for a great gift for their boss. But then she is quick to boast about surpassing Misty and Togepi in cuteness by having captured this adorable Snubble. Our heroes, after giving up their chase of the Snubble, decide to approach the Onyx Tunnel, but things go south very fast. Team Rocket confronts our heroes on one end, with Ash and Pikachu being engaged with them, whereas Misty and Brock face off against the trio of the formidable Onyxes. The battles are intense, but our heroes emerge victorious, overcoming both the scheming Team Rocket and the formidable Onyx trio with the help and coordination with each other, and the tunnel is finally conquered. The group then resumes their journey towards Golden Rod City as Ash gets more eager for the next gym. Ash and his friends trek through a lush forest when their attention is captivated by a bird house nestled high in a tree. Then, just like the cannon, they spot a shiny noctowl, eluding the attempts of a man below trying to catch it. The man then goes on to introduce himself as Dr. Weissman and shares with the gang his desire to capture the shiny noctowl, known for its smaller size and, and better intelligence than the normal noctowls. Ash decides that he wants to catch the noctowl too and eagerly hurls a pokeball at the pokemon, but the shiny noctowl effortlessly kicks it back. Dr. Weissman though is undeterred and vows to outsmart the clever Pokemon. Unknown to our heroes though, Team Rocket has eavesdropped on them from a rooftop and start making plans to present the shiny Noctowl to their boss as a present. Now, like the cannon, Dr. Wiseman tries and uses a mirror to hypnotize the shiny Noctowl and succeeds, causing it to hypnotize itself and fall from the tree. But even though the Noctowl is hypnotized, it still manages to hypnotize the doctor as well, who then mistakenly picks up a rock instead of the actual Pokemon, while the actual Pokemon wobbles away in a 
hypnotized state. Concerned about the Pokemon, Ash approaches it cautiously, asking the Pokemon if it's alright. But suddenly, a colossal regular colored knocked out mecha comes out of nowhere and of course is being controlled by Team Rocket and they swoop in attempting to capture the shiny knocked out for themselves. Ash tries to protect the Pokemon through Pikachu's Thunderbolt but it bounces back on our heroes damaging them, forcing Ash to summon Totodile and Cyndaquil who are easily defeated by Team Rocket as well. Despite our heroes trying to pose a challenge to Team Rocket, Team Rocket successfully snatched the shiny knocked out from Dr. Wiseman who was trying to run away with it. Refusing to give up though, Ash deploys Heracross and Teddy Ursa who use their strength to ground the robotic knocked out. Then climbing a tree, Ash leaps onto the mecha's foot attempting to pry it open and release the shiny Pokemon. Ash succeeds in loosening the grip of the foot just enough for the shiny knocked out to break free. Unfortunately though, Ash and Noctowl both go straight through trees right to the ground. But Ash in a selfless act shields the weakened Noctowl with his body from the fall but faints himself upon impact. Witnessing Ash's care, the shiny Noctowl communicates with his Pokemon and directs Cyndaquil to unleash a flamethrower on the mecha overheating it and then asks Totodile to follow that up with a water gun and their combined effort cracks the metal of the mecha. Pikachu then delivers a thunderbolt to blow the whole mecha up sending Team Rocket blasting off. Ash then regains consciousness as Noctowl embraces the trainer in gratitude. Later, Dr. Wiseman acknowledges the Pokemon's intelligence and suggests that Ash has earned its trust and should be the only one to catch it. Noctowl willingly agrees and joins Ash's team after a small battle and our heroes bid farewell to Dr. Wiseman, continuing their journey towards Goldenrod City. Little Molly Hale leads a lonely life with only her father, Professor Hale, in Greenfield's town who is a scientist. However, her world takes a dark turn when the mysterious unknown causes her father to vanish. The unknown's power then transforms the entire town into a fantastical landscape with Molly living in a crystal palace and the legendary Entei acting like a father. Yet, something crucial is still missing to complete Molly's perfect family a mother. In her altered reality, Molly claims Ash's mom Delia as her own mother, causing Ente to go out and capture Ash's mom, leading our heroes to embark on a quest to rescue her. Now, just like the canon, Ash, Misty and Brock journey towards a mansion to rescue Ash's mom. Professor Oak enlightens them about the unknown's ability to read thoughts and create alternate realities and explains that the crystal formations are manifestations of Molly's wishes made true by the unknown's powers. Then, similar to the canon, Brock engages in a battle against an adult version of Molly, bravely standing up to her and sacrificing himself and his Pokemon to allow Ash and Misty to proceed further up the stairs to rescue his mom. However, following Brock's loss, Misty is then forced into a water-type battle against Molly too, with her Polyrath and Mantine both succumbing to Molly's Kingdra, which is too strong for Misty to handle. Though, the battle still allows and gives Ash enough time to continue ahead and reach the top of the stairs, only for him to face Entei, who creates a formidable barrier blocking Ash's path. A series of intense battles unfold as each of Ash's Pokemons fall to Entei's overwhelming strength. Even Pikachu is unable to do any major damage. Ash is frustrated and tries to reason with Molly as this is when Entei gets annoyed and tries to destroy Ash outright with a flamethrower. This is when, like the canon, Ash's Charizard enters the scene and causes a fierce clash of flamethrowers and protects Ash who is relieved to see one of his strongest companions there to his rescue. Now, the battle rages on as Entei's relentless onslaught of fire attacks continues. Ash commands Charizard to slice through the attacks with a Dragon Rush, but the attack proves ineffective. Entei retaliates with extreme speed, totally outclassing and outspeeding Charizard and dealing great damage. Every attempt by Charizard to counter Entei's attacks is met with only failure, as Entei seems impossible for Ash and Charizard to defeat. This is when, in a critical moment, Charizard's Air Slash is deflected by Entei, sending it dangerously close to Molly. Delia acts quickly and shields Molly and herself from the attack. This distraction though creates an opening and Charizard seizes the opportunity to execute a powerful seismic toss sending Entei crashing. Now the fiery battle between the two Pokemon continues in the background as Ash realizes that Molly's belief is sustaining Entei's strength. Determined to get through to her, Ash rushes to Molly and her mom. Entei though attempts to intervene but Charizard stands firm and, and prevents any interruptions in Ash's plans. 
Now, amidst the chaos and the battle in the background between Charizard and Entei, Ash passionately explains to Molly how her desires have hurt his friends and taken his mom away from him. Misty and Brock now make their way up the stairs, nursing their injuries and end up joining Ash and reaffirming his words to Molly. Witnessing the pain her demands and her wishes have caused, Molly begins to cry. In this vulnerable moment, the strength of Entei decreases. Ash seizes this opportunity to continue reasoning with Molly, helping her recognize the reality as the weakened Entei continues to clash with Charizard in the background. Now, power of Entei is diminishing gradually, with the tide of the battle finally beginning to turn in Charizard's favor. As Charizard is finally able to overpower Entei's flamethrower, but for some reason, the crystals in the area start attacking Molly, and Ash asks Charizard to jump in and save her, which shocks Entei. Now, a scared Molly hugs Ash and asks Entei to stop fighting, while also crying and demanding for everything to be real again. But the crystals keep attacking them. Entei, realizing the chaos that they are in, creates a path for the group to escape the mansion. Amidst the crumbling surroundings, our heroes manage to reach the exit, but are blocked by an impenetrable unknown barrier. Desperation fills the air as Ash attempts to breach the seemingly impenetrable barrier on his own, but his each attempt is met with a force that repels him. Then Charizard tries alone and exerts all his strength against the mystical wall, yet even he fails. Then Pikachu gives it a shot with a powerful thunderbolt, but even he fails to make a dent. As a last resort, Ash asks Pikachu and Charizard to combine their forces, unleashing a simultaneous barrage of thunderbolt and flamethrower upon the barrier. Although for a fleeting moment, the barrier shows signs of cracking and opening up, but it then swiftly regains its strength back, pushing the Pokemon back again. The situation appears to be dire as this is when Entei catches up with our heroes and with the resolve in his eyes expresses his commitment to helping Molly and the heroes and declares that he was brought to life from her dreams and states that with her unwavering belief in him, there is nothing he cannot achieve. Though despite his determination, even Entei is unable to break through the barrier. But he is not ready to give up yet and persists running headstrong into the barrier again while urging Molly to lend him strength. Ash encourages Molly as well, emphasizing that her belief in Entei is crucial to overcoming the influence of the unknown. Feeling the weight of the situation, Molly shouts with determination that you can do it Entei. This is when in a powerful display of unity, even Pikachu and Charizard join Entei's efforts. The trio's combined strength finally begins to weaken the barrier as cracks start to appear and the unbreakable wall then starts to give away under the immense power of our heroes belief and unity. Now, the barrier shatters and a surge of light envelops the whole scene. The radiant light slowly dims down, revealing Entei to be enveloped in a gentle green aura. As tears well up in Entei's eyes, it speaks with a mixture of sadness and contentment, expressing that his time has come and he must now go. It thanks Molly for letting it have the happiness of being a father, asking her to keep the memories of their time together alive in her dreams. With a tearful nod, Molly agrees to hold on to the cherished moments she spent with Entei. Then Entei begins to crystallize, fading away from existence. And in Entei's place, a weakened figure materializes, Professor Hale, Molly's real father, who is relieved to be free from the ordeal of being trapped by the unknown. Meanwhile, the unknown vanishes into a mysterious portal, dissolving the crystalline structures and restoring the once fantastical mansion and the Greenfields town to their normal state, leaving behind a tranquil scene and a reconciled father and daughter who are hugging each other, only for Molly to be later glancing at the sky and see a cloud shape like Entei. Delia, also now free, embraces Ash and his friends in gratitude. Professor Oak then arrives with law enforcement and amid discussions, Ash receives a letter and Misty a report along with the mysterious container from O. Ash and his friends then bid farewell and with a final embrace and words of pride, they depart leaving Greenfield Town behind. So that's all for this part as next week with part 4, we will venture deep into Johto. So all of you still please let me know your thoughts and views on this part in the comment section. Also tell me in the comment section ideas for what kind of YouTube shots you would like to see on the channel. And I also wanted to deeply apologize for my 2-3 month absence and lack of content on the channel. I can't tell you how grateful I have been for your support through these past months and I apologize once again. But what matters is now I am back and let's get to 2000 subscribers on the channel as soon as we can. Only 190 subscribers to go. So stay tuned for more more videos. Peace, Dragon Guy.